Okay, a great question here today from Gene in Nashville, Tennessee. Gene asks us, what are your thoughts on a stereo amplifier versus a dual monoblock setup? And are the dual monoblock setups really worth the extra maybe uh, cost and or space uh, that they take up? Uh, you know, I miss Nashville, Tennessee, so hopefully I'll get back there soon. Uh, but let's, let's answer your question. It's a really good one. I made this little list of pros, um, things in favor of, um, for the stereo amplifier and the mono blocks. And I will say these are a little bit subjective, but we're going to get to you at the technical answer of your question here in just a few minutes. First and for foremost on the stereo, you know, um, a pro is it's probably less expensive to buy a stereo amplifier than a dual mono block. There are more components in a dual mono block setup because you have to completely duplicate everything, whereas in a step stereo amplifier, you are typically sharing some common components, i.e. typically the power supply. Um, so typically less expensive for a stereo. Um, two, they take up less space. Um, you don't have these two chassis sitting there. Um, three, they are typically a simpler setup. Um, you know, one place to plug your cables into um, and whatnot. Um, one volume control um, to, to kind of control the volume for both channels and one power cord um, typically feeding these things. So those are kind of the pros I see there. A little bit subjective. Um, mono blocks. Um, better channel separation. And I highlighted this in blue for a reason. This is the one, the one technical reason why um, mono blocks uh, may win out over stereo amplifiers. Um, second reason here, they are likely higher in setups. In other words, somebody building an amplifier, if they're going to go to the extreme you know, extent of building a dual mono block setup, they probably have used the most high-end components throughout. In other words, they have set out from the get-go to do this thing the best possible way um, that it could be done. So you might find that a dual mono block setup might be a little bit higher end setup. And then third, you would just have the coolness factor of two amps uh, sitting up there. Um, I, sometimes I see people take two amplifiers and put them on top of their speakers. I'm not a big fan of that um, uh, for a couple reasons that we won't get into here, but um, hey, there's a coolness factor here with it. But uh, let's dive into this uh, highlighted blue better, better channel separation. That's the one technical merit I want to dive deep into today. Okay, this is a typical uh, tube amp power supply, but it could be a, uh, a uh, solid state power supply. It's, it's the same conversation. You, know, you got your power lead here, you're feeding into some type of transformer. Coming out the other side of the transformer, you're rectifying this in some way. It could be tube rectification, could be solid state. Then typically you're going through some type of filter cap, some type of inductor. So this would be a CLC setup here. Um, some type of inductor and another capacitor, and then you would feed into your amplifier here on the B plus power supply. Like I said, could be solid state, could be tube, um, could be for a solid state amp or a tube amp. Either way, you're kind of rectifying and uh, filtering your power supply about the same way. Um, and then typically you will feed that into some type of amplifier. And by the way, this is the uh, Michael Della KT88 single in design. And I am still waiting on transformers from Edcore, if you're wondering what's take, taking so long on this uh, single end amplifier video series I'm working on. Uh, so stay tuned. Anyway, this is kind of how the power supply connects. Um, if you drew it as a, a black box, um, you got the positive side, a negative side, almost like a battery. Let's just pretend this is a 400 volt battery. Um, and you connect your positive to the B plus and your negative to the ground of your amplifier. And then what happens is, as you are driving this output stage, whether this is a tube output, a KT88, or whether it's some transistor output, but as you drive it, your output device here converts this little signal into a great big signal that then ultimately drives your speakers. And so this device is pulling current, and typically a significant amount of current. And as you hit something like a large bass note, or um, maybe, maybe a, you know, a, um, a really strong acoustic um, sound like a voice or uh, from a, a guitar, it pulls harder on this than at, uh, at other frequencies within the audio spectrum. And um, based on that, you may pull this power supply battery, 
um, we'll call it here, you may pull it down a few volts based on the, um, the amount of current being pulled in that instantaneous moment that you kind of hit that base note or whatnot. And um, so instead of 400 volts it's putting out, maybe at that for that few microseconds, it drops down to 390 volts. And then, and then that note goes away and the power supply kind of rebuilds itself right back up and all of a sudden it's back at 400 volts. But what happens if you have two channels connected to that same power supply? And all I did here was flip this amplifier so the top one would be channel A, our left channel, and the bottom amplifier down here would be channel B. And this is what you typically find in a stereo amplifier. You've got two different channels, two completely separate kind of um, um, you know, signal flows here. Uh, but they're typically fed with a single power supply. So what happens if for, for that instantaneous few microseconds that this power supply gets swamped? I'll use that word. <laughs> technical term. Uh, we swamp the power supply here and it can't provide enough current to keep up for just a few microseconds on that heavy bass note. Well guess what? The other channel over here um, suffers during that, that time period. So um, maybe they were playing a treble note over here while on the right channel while the left channel was playing a heavy bass note. Um, you may cause that treble note to waver just a little bit. Just a slight bit because your voltage on your power supply dropped just a little bit for that, that microsecond when that heavy bass note hit up here on the left channel. So um, that's the issue you can run into is you don't have complete channel separation because your battery or power supply that's feeding both channels um, is somewhat subject, subject to being influenced on one channel and that causing an effect on the other channel. All right, so you may ask them, why would anyone ever build a stereo amplifier? If this uh, crosstalk, as we'll call it, uh, can be an issue because of sharing the power supply, why would anyone ever do that? Why would they not build, maybe in a single chassis, um, two channels and two separate power supplies, or build two separate chassis with two channels and two separate power supplies, i.e. monoblocks? Well, there's kind of two reasons. First and foremost, um, this channel separation issue is, is not as bad as it sounds. Most people's ear, if you had built a power supply, something like this one, would never be able to tell the difference. Um, maybe, maybe not. Um, and blind subjective taste test, I'm saying probably more often not. But maybe a very dis discerning ear could tell the difference. So if so, then there's answer number two. Build a power supply that kind of combats or that is resilient against this channel separation uh, and crosstalk issue. So this was the uh, power supply built in the single-ended 807 amplifier. You had your transformer here, you brought it over, you rectified it, and then as soon as you had this rectified voltage, look what we did. We did something here called a split rail power supply. We separated the left channel and the right channel at that point. And so we've kind of got this C, uh, first capacitor here, LC, so a CLC filter here. And we've split that apart, one for the left channel and one for the right. Then we've got a RC and then another RC um, filter here, even on top of that. So um, kind of what you got going on here is, if you remember, inductors. Inductors oppose change in voltage. That is their whole purpose in life. They kind of fight a change in voltage. And then you got capacitors here, which their goal in life is to fight and oppose a change in current. So the fact that you split these out separately, when that base note hits here on the left channel, you've got all these devices here that are designed to keep both the voltage and the current consistent on that channel, which by the way, are separate from the devices that are fighting to keep the current and voltage um, at the same level on the other channel. And so um, you really, to some extent here, have designed and built a power supply that is resilient to this crosstalk issue. And I don't think anyone, even with a very discerning ear, could ever tell the difference if you had uh, in a true split rail power supply set up like this. So the short and narrow to this whole video, you know, what's the difference between the two? A well done and properly built stereo amplifier, in my opinion, is as good or can be as good as a dual mono block setup. And I would challenge anybody um, 
from a technical merit standpoint, I'd love to debate that with someone. Uh, and I'd love to get into a blind listening test on that as well. Um, I'll tell you, you'd have to have a, uh, an amazing ear to tell the difference if the power supply is done properly. I'm not going to knock that if you build a, a mono setup that there is no chance of channel um, crosstalk at that point. So, um, you know, it's hard to debate that, um, that you could get better than the mono because you, you probably can't. Uh, I'm just saying I think a really well-designed uh, stereo one can be just as good. It's my opinions. Love to debate it with you. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you learned something.